So this video is going to be the process of fabricating or uh, modifying a 35 Ford truck firewall. Uh, a buddy of mine who donated the, I say donated, but I have to pay him for him. He donated them until I pay. He's, he's let me take them for the time being until I, I pay for him. So he's temporarily donating them. He gave me a 35 Ford pickup. I think it's a 35, 6, 7 maybe or something. A 35, 36 Ford pickup firewall. I'll grab it. Uh, that's going to go in the car. That's a typical modification. I know a lot of guys nowadays run. Um, it eliminates having to cut up a 34 firewall. It, the, the geometry is similar, but it's different enough where it doesn't require a ton of modification to mount it, yet the firewall is actually set further back, which gives you the additional room you need to run these motors. So, uh, so this is a 35-36 truck firewall. And typically on a 34 firewall, I hold it sideways, you can see on a 33-34 car firewall, this wing comes all the way out, I'd say probably about another four or five inches. And the firewall follows that four or five inches out. So when you modify one of these, you have to cut it way back. Whereas the 35, 36 truck firewall, you're already back four or five inches. And then on top of that, you have this recess here, which is another two inches. And that's roughly where the distributor obviously typically goes, on, you know, depending on what type of motor you're running. Pete, like I said, gave this to me to use on the car uh, just to keep things moving forwards. That's kind of the next step. So that being said, the next thing I'm going to work on is the firewall. I don't know the process. Uh, I haven't ever done anything like this. So I'm going to make some measurements. I'm going to remove some stuff off the motor to, to open up some space for myself to work. And I'm just going to start making measurements. I don't know if I'm going to make a paper template or some type of a template. But I think what I'll probably end up doing is making some measurements from the car, transferring them over onto the truck firewall and then making cuts and doing whatever I have to do to make it fit. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to get some things set up and get to work on uh, getting this thing cut up and fitted and, and mounted into the car. So that's it. All right, well, I got my, I got this firewall sitting up here on my little metal stand. I'm going to start going around the outside edge and removing it from this outer band it looks like I mean this part already just ripped off it actually looks like someone's re-welded this at one point in time I see a lot of non-factory welds I'm not going to use the top portion of this this is going to remain uncut so what I'm going to do is I'll probably go from this bend here probably go up half an inch and that'll give me some material to melt to weld to the existing firewall so essentially this the top portion of the the 33 34 and then this is very similar so what guys do is they take the bottom portion up to this inside bend typically what you would do is you would leave a lip on the going down this slope a half inch or a quarter of an inch you would weld to that lip but because Brad or whoever cut the lip off, I'm going to do it reversed. I'm going to go up the firewall half an inch and then use a little bit above the, the bend. It appears as though this is about two inches wider than the, the firewall and the coop or for the area that I need to fill. So what I'll end up doing is cut this edge off and then I'll cut the middle and then I'll bring it in, it'll overlap, and then I'll cut it down the middle and re-weld it down the middle. Uh, so that's the plan. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove everything that I don't need. I'm going to make some rough measurements on the firewall and the coop. And I'm going to relieve the area that I need to relieve for the steering column. And then start to do my relief for the bell housing in the back of the motor. I'm going to get to work on removing everything I don't need. I think I'm actually going to do this outside. It's not a bad day today. It's almost 60 degrees. And the shop just gets so nasty. So 
I'm gonna kind of just gonna move this stuff outside. I'm gonna wear my ear protection so I can protect my ears and listen to music. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get that to work or not. Might just be too much going on. Yeah, I think I'm gonna probably have to get rid of the hat. Whoa! I got a break in my cord. Whoa! I decided to pull this apart because I saw what it was doing. I got a break right in here. It's inevitable. The more you use things, the more abuse they get. Nothing breaks sitting on the shelf. So what I'm doing is, I'm actually just cutting about a quarter of an inch down, going along this edge, and that's, that's allowing me to remove this, this lip, and then when I remove that lip, I can get to the spot welds in between the metal. I can see straight down in between the two pieces of metal, and now I can get my cutoff blade in, in between and remove the spot welds, then I can separate the edge from the firewall. an extra bracket under here but I don't want to cut the bracket in case I use it well now I got a lot of measuring to do all right so now I, what I got to do is I got to make some measurements so I can remove this material for the steering column and also the bell housing area I'm listening to music Protecting my ear balls. All right, I'm gonna take my headphones off. My headphones and my eye protection. So like I said now, basically what I need to do is I need to start transferring over measurements from the opening to the firewall. So a little over four inches from this back portion is going to be the firewall. So I think what I'll do is take some tape, go across the firewall like that. Actually, no. I got to back that up. I got to do it on the other edge. All right, so that's going to be the very face of the furthest point of the firewall. It's going to be at that area there. And then two inches further back 
where the recess is going to be roughly two inches. Yeah, inch and three quarters. So, the width of the tape. So the recess where the firewall is going to be around the back of the distributor is going to be to the back edge of the tape. So that will give me plenty of room for what I need in regards to the distributor. Mm. Why are you blocking the camera? You don't want people to see me? Where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm in my PJs. <laughs> Working from home, you're always in your PJs. <laughs> Oh. Must, must be nice. Is that what they say? Must be nice. No, it's not. I don't feel like it's you. I mean, how do you feel? You're always in your garage. I or? feel great. <laughs> oh, Michael. Oh, stop. Oh, you shouldn't. You were walking too fast. I almost got you. Whoa, you got me. <laughs> Better shot than I am. All right, you're making me lose my concentration. Okay, I'm going right, out. So. What are you going out? <laughs> I'm going out. Is it five o'clock? Almost. It's four. So five and a half. Look at the... I love this one. So five and a half. Five. So five and a half is so half inch. So seven and five eighths. Eight and three eighths. So five and a half. To eight and three eighths. So five and a half. I'm gonna do five and an eighth to eight and a quarter. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So that's roughly the ballpark. Where I have to cut out my steering column, but I want to cut as little as I possibly have to. I think I should go five and three quarters to eight. Yeah, that looks a little better. I said, I mean, I want to just cut it as as little as I have to, so I'm not trying to put metal back where I cut it out. Alright, so then from the frame rail up at that same location, I'm going to be I'm just using my square going down, hitting the top of the frame, and this hitting my steering column tells me at the front edge of the tape, which is this surface here, I need to be, as long as it's vertical, five and a half inches from the bottom. Now at this point I don't know where the bottom is, because I haven't found the bottom yet. I think what I'll do is measure it, try to measure it from the top down. Well this is going to be something else. Uh, how the heck am I going to do this? I almost need to put a piece of sheet metal in the brake. And break it to mimic this panel. And that will kind of give me the, the dimensions on what I need. I'll try doing it like this. So, this tells me close to, close to vertical, 9 inches. Nine inches from the from the break down. Nine inches. That's exact. That's exact where this is. I'm gonna find the center mark on my firewall. I'm gonna scribe a mark, cut it, and then remove this. I'm gonna find my center, and I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. And that's going to allow me to start laying out these pieces and figuring out what areas I need to remove to get it to fit. So from what I'm told, from what I'm told, it's a pretty straightforward process.
All right, so this is what I'm left with. After that entire firewall, this is what I'm left with. Driver's side piece. And the passenger side. No. No, is this the pass? Yeah. Yeah, passenger side, driver's side. So what I, what's gonna end up happening is these pieces are actually gonna overlap. And then I'll cut it down the middle and then I'll butt weld them together. So I'm going to get to work on starting to fit the driver's side. Figure out exactly how that's going to work. I think this is just going to be one of those real slow processes. That's just the way it goes when you're working on these old hot rods. I don't need the tape there. A couple little brackets and clips and stuff that I'll, I'll cut off when I get that far. So first off, I have a lot of material that I need to eliminate over the bell housing. So, what I need to do is, the easiest way for me to do it, I think, is to measure from the bottom edge of the firewall that's on the car up to this top edge, because the difference of this it's hard to explain. I gotta drop it down the height of this. As you can see, I essentially have to go up five and a half inches from this lowest point right here. Kind of follow the contour of the bell housing. I'll end up having to notch this opening for the steering a little. So what I did was I just used this angle finder or this, I don't know what you even call this. It was my grandfather's. I put it on the top of the bell housing. So I just used this tool here, put it on top of the bell housing until it hit on the edge of the bell housing there. Now you can kind of get an idea. If I were to hold this, if I were to hold this more or less level, I can kind of get an idea of the shape I need, which is more or less what I have. Bring this line in just a little, so maybe bring this in. I look down over the top, down this area here, and this this point here was where this edge of the bell housing came down so it may not be exact at the moment but this is gonna get me this is gonna get me really close this should this should get 
the firewall down behind the motor at this point and then if I have to make any modification here around the steering I will I feel like I'm going to have to open it up just a little bit over here I don't think I have to go much higher but I think I have to at least open it up some so I think the steering column is just a little little over this way so I'm going to get this piece cut out and I'm going to get it fitted So you can see what I cut out there. Let's see if you can see. Can you see? All right, so just like I thought, I'm going to have to open up the hole where the steering column is get this to get it to drop down some but you can see the shape of this firewall how it fits just behind the motor this is typical with this firewall with a lot of the 50s era overhead valve engines that's why a lot of these guys, a lot of guys run this firewall it's just a really clean modification onto these 33 34 cars so I'm going to make some measurements and then get this uh, steering area uh, material cut out for the steering column. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm still getting the fitment of the firewall at this point. I've got it sitting further down onto the motor. I still need to do a little trimming around the steering column. But you can see it's getting closer. Uh, I have good clearance around the motor and the in the bell housing at this point and I'm still fine tuning I'm still fine tuning around the steering column what I did was I actually I I relieved the area that's on top of the just on top of the steering column see it has a little bit of an angle this piece here it actually sits like this so kind of hard to show it sits like that and this little flange sits down on top of the steering column the steering column comes out just comes out right here um, so I removed that I'm gonna to try to reuse that once I get the location of the steering column uh, but what I think I need to do is I think I need to go around with a hammer and dolly and actually work this edge I need to work this edge it's uh, it's in pretty rough shape it's kind of it's kind of flared out. I need to bang it back in and get it 90 degrees to the firewall. I'm gonna go down both sides and clean up the edge. And then what I need to do is I think I'm gonna have to relieve a little bit on the bottom here in order to get it sitting flush up against the side of this wing. There's a little spot where the hood where the hood uh, latch mechanism goes. It kind of bumps into the firewall, and it's not allowing this to go in like it's supposed to yeah I'm gonna make a little mark on that with my chalk so and it's hitting the firewall is hitting the steering column I'd say it has to go down about three quarters of an inch so like I said I'm gonna grab a hammer and dolly and just do a little bit of work on this flange so I can get this sitting better in the firewall I'm back in the garage as you can tell I'm as you can tell I'm excited to be back in the garage uh, kind of been low on motivation to get back in the garage since I've had all the home projects going on and I'm actually right now in the process of putting heat in my house new heating system after like 12 years of struggling with a heating system I had so it's just tons and tons of stuff going on um, finally had a chance to get to the steel yard the other day or a week or so ago um, 
So I get to work on the floors, start building the frame structure for the floors. I'm still not 100% sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet. I know I need to build some type of a K member or some type of an X brace. It's going to be a little difficult. Uh, not, not exactly knowing. I just don't know how I'm going to do it yet, basically. So I have a bunch of material and a bunch of stock to move forward with it. So I'm going to get working on a couple of the other things right now, which is primarily right now at the moment, today, I'm going to work on continuing the install for the 35 Ford truck firewall. I'll show you guys where I'm at, show you pretty much, you probably saw where I left off because that would have been about 45 seconds ago in the video. But I'm going to refresh my memory because it's been over a month since I've laid a hand on this thing and I'm kind of feeling pretty guilty. I don't like taking time off. Uh, as, as you guys can see, I made a lot of progress in a short amount of time leading up to my break. And then everything with Allie's house and my mom's house and now my house, I've been able to get a lot of a lot of things done and a lot of things accomplished in that aspect. And now I'm going to jump back on the car and see what I can get done. I, I try to really do things like month to month. So I'd love to have this thing basically maybe ready to fire by springtime. Uh, I, I wouldn't... I did charge the battery. I guess the battery didn't charge. You gotta be freaking kidding me. I don't know. I can't win. I charged this battery all night last night. Maybe it wasn't plugged in. I don't know. But my camera's flashing, telling me, charge the battery. So, I'm shutting you guys down. I'm gonna charge the battery. And I'm just gonna keep picking away on this firewall. This process, uh, it said it... I think at the beginning of this video that it is going to be a long slow process fitting and piecing in this firewall and this 30 minute video roughly I think is about what it is is probably like four hours worth of work uh, and videotaping you know so uh, just going to be a really slow process so I'm going to end this video here uh, just finishing up kind of just fitting the main portion of the firewall without even doing the wing and everything um, so the next video will be me finishing up the driver's side portion of the firewall getting the wing cut down and fitted and then moving over onto the passenger side so I don't want to make this a long video like series just doing the firewall but if people are out there that are into these 33 34s uh, and you've ever thought about doing this, you'll see that it's just a really long process, uh, which truthfully I wasn't expecting. I thought this was going to be a pretty straightforward thing. From what people told me, it was going to just be a, kind of a quick, you do this, you do that, and boom, it just fits, and it's super easy, and it's, it's anything but that. Uh, so, but it's a good project to get back into the garage and do and get that taken care of, get it off my, my to-do list. And then, like I said, moving forwards, as soon as I can get my tow board placement, I'll know exactly where my pedals need to go so they can, you know, remain underneath the tow board. And then uh, kind of find out where my master cylinder is going to go. i got to build a, a frame for my, my uh, pedal assembly and master cylinder. So I'm really looking forward to that. For some reason, I mean, I like doing the pedal layout. Uh, I really enjoyed it on my, the other two cars that I built. So I'm looking forward to doing that on this. So appreciate everybody, everyone's support. Thanks everybody for the uh, all the just positive comments and and just like I had said, the support. I guess you know m moving through the process of the 34 and just allowing me to grow the YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to also say that I've been working on a website and the website is now up and running it's live I activated it I think on Sunday it's now Wednesday um, this is my first opportunity now filming to let you guys know that the website is up and running and I have a merchandise store up there so as of right now it's the t-shirts I have t-shirts the stickers and I have two separate posters I have the staging lane poster from Trog, which was the giveaway poster, which is a 21 inch wide by 36 inch tall poster. I also have that in a smaller version, which is a 14 by 24 uh, vertical poster. 
And then I also have the Flathead Mercury poster, which was the black and white photo that was on the screen of my laptop during the New Year's Day giveaway. I have that poster also in 14 by 24 and the 21 by 36. Uh, I have the 21 by 36 in my possession of both photos of both posters. I didn't order any of the smaller ones yet, but I'm going to do that pretty soon. I've sent out two individual logos to my t-shirt guy, trying to build up the inventory and the stock on the t-shirts. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff on the website, super cool. PayPal is the linked checkout. So if you guys have a PayPal account, you can just click on, you know, build up your cart, whatever you want to do, and then just check out with PayPal. Pretty seamless, pretty straightforward. I've actually done it a few times myself through the website, just kind of doing test runs, uh, and everything's worked out perfect. So I actually just uh, sold a few things the other day also from people that saw that the website was up and running from Facebook and Instagram. So thanks everybody again. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the support. Ali appreciates it's all. Excuse me. Ali appreciates it also. And just really looking forward to being back in the garage. Uh, I'm busy at work, but still making time at night to get out into the garage, get some things taken care of, and keep this thing moving. I uh, just ordered some interior stuff so I can get my seat laid out, stop building my seat. And my, me and my buddy Joe are going to do that together. He's going to be my interior guy on this. We were hashing out some plans the other night. And really looking forward to what this is going to actually evolve into. And just super, super excited to see it come together. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate it. I hope everybody's well. Get out in the garage. Work on your cars. Work on your stuff. Send me emails. Send me pictures. I love seeing the people that watch their, their rides, their cars, their trucks. Just project, bicycles, motorcycles. Everybody's into different things. So I really enjoy seeing those. The email is thisoldhotrod at gmail.com and the website is thisoldhotrod.com. Pretty simple, should be pretty easy to remember. Uh, so it's thisoldhotrod.com and the email. Or you can send me an email right through the website. Uh, it's thisoldhotrod at gmail.com is the, is the email. So thanks again, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.